Hello, and welcome to our weekly science program. I'm Andrew Price, and with me to discuss some of the week's science stories are Mary Atherton. Hello, Mary. Hello. And David Slater. Hello, David. Hello, Andrew. Mary, you've got a crazy story which I'm not sure is science. Ah, but it is science. It was presented at a recent conference hosted by NASA in the United States, so it must be true. So it must be. It's a NASA conference, so it must be true? Yeah, it's brilliant. It's great. Go on. A group of scientists have come up with a way of making travel into geostationary Earth orbit much more economical, using what they call a space elevator. The current price tag for space missions is around $22,000 per kilogram. But with this new transportation system, the cost could come down to as little as $220 per kilogram. That's around a hundredth of the cost it is now. Wow, that sounds almost too good to believe. It might be worth explaining to listeners exactly what geostationary Earth orbit is, Mary. Right. Well, this is where an object in space such as a communications satellite, orbits the Earth directly above the equator. It rotates in the same direction as the Earth, at a speed that allows it to appear motionless from a fixed point on the ground. A kind of a parallel movement, if you like. OK. So how would this transportation system work exactly? Well, the space elevator would be made from a carbon nanotube ribbon a kind of advanced carbon fibre attached to an offshore sea platform at the equator. Right. This high-tech cable, if you like, would then stretch to an opposing weight around 100,000 kilometres into space. The pulling force of this counterweight would ensure that the ribbon remains stretched, a bit like a guitar string. It sounds rather like the physics behind kite flying, is that right? Something like that, yes. So how would we actually get passengers or cargo into space? Right. Well, a piece of equipment known as a mechanical lifter would be attached to the ribbon, and this would climb up the cable into geostationary orbit. David, you're listening to the story with a look of disbelief. It's a story from a NASA conference. Why would it be wrong? No, it's not about whether I believe it. It's about whether it's really possible. I mean... The ribbon would have to be extremely strong and flexible to allow a system like this to work. Well, yes, you're right, David. The success of the space elevator relies on the high strength of carbon nanotubes. They're around 100 times stronger than steel and as flexible as rubber. So if they're woven into a ribbon, their estimated strength appears to be great enough to make the system possible. I guess exposure to radiation would also be a problem, wouldn't it, Mary? Yes, that's true. Since transit times into space would be slower on the mechanical lifters than they are in a conventional spaceship, the passage through the Van Allen belts would be longer, and this would increase passengers' exposure to radiation. OK. I think I'll let someone else try that first before I buy my ticket into geostationary orbit. Ah, oh, where's your sense of adventure, Andrew? Well, my sense of adventure doesn't extend beyond a trip to Disneyland, I'm afraid. Right. David, moving on to something far closer to Earth, so you've been covering the science behind a new eco-friendly city being built near Abu Dhabi. 